Unfortunately, the those who have no way to pass the mic to me to comment on the women's issues. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Parti Kalan Rakyat has a policy, a party policy of ensuring 30% representation, women representation. However, of course, the party leadership always insists that uh, the women elected or chosen to run for elections, they have to have, um, capable, they are capable uh, in their own right, their leaders, um, so on and so forth. So they have, must have some standard, so to speak. But number three, I myself take the opportunity to also add on my two cents worth. I think we do not have that criteria for male candidates. <laughs> That uh, you know, if you apply that standard for women, the same should go for the men. Yeah, 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 yeah. And many <laughs> and and many women before 2008, uh, when we were appointed to run for elections, uh, a lot of us were attested. We were real greenhorns. You know, I was only um, extremist NGO person at that time. <laughs> With a now very popular NGO, sorry. Uh, Nurita just came back uh, from doing her masters. You know, the rest were you know professionals or, or you know community leaders. But I think all the women from PKR for the past four years have performed remarkably, especially in Parliament. So that's the second of the starting to work. First is representation in the House of Representatives. Secondly, of course, in the cabinet. So we also would, I would like to take note that our Menteri Besar in Selangor, Kansri Khalid, also in consultation with Dr. Sri Ahmad Ibrahim, appointed four out of ten women to be members of the EXCO in Selangor. I think that's 40%. That's any time more than Barisan National in its history. Um, I also note, I did a quick count. We're all sitting in front. We're also 30% here. <laughs> so I think uh, you think, rest assured, I'm very sure that those three, and also that those three, Dr. Wan Aziza will ensure that more women will be represented both in the house, the, the lower house, as well as in the state assembly. The uh, I'd like to also take this opportunity to have a quick, uh, uh, I think to put things into perspective, also, also a question from you, Dave. You know what will happen, do we have to smoke up to, do we have to do this and do that? I think let's remember what happened four years ago, uh, March, no, March 9th, 2008, the day after we won, to our shock and horror in Selangor. <laughs> what did we do? We didn't stock up food. I went makan at one time with my family. Tan Sri Khalid, I think he was trying to, uh, you know, he had his own meetings uh, with all the party leaders to get their consent to go to the palace and get the consent of the palace to become government. And nothing happened to us. I think we have to remember that the same thing happened in Penang, in Para, in Kedah. So, looking at that four years ago and four years later today, especially when the citizens and the voters are so much more empowered, so much more vocal. I am sure that you don't have to worry. The day we win, the, uh, the day after we win, we can go to one time and I can all come back to Mum's place. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the point is that um, if we, of course, we always have contingency plans, um, but then again, we shouldn't scare ourselves. I think at the end of the day, sometimes we tend to intellectualize too many of these things or we think too much. The common people, the next day they'll go back to work because they have to earn a living, they have no time for all these things. So some of us, you know, especially those middle class, they got, you know, grand imagination. But at the end of the day, we have to go back to work the next day. So don't worry, we'll be on the way to the palace to seek audience with the king to form the next government. So just look forward to it that, that day. The last time, when we came into power, we didn't go around trying to take over you know, this crony that big companies then. We went through the records, whoever didn't pay their taxes, and mind you, there were a lot of companies 
especially unorganized international companies who didn't pay their land tax, who didn't pay, pay their uh, into their assessments and so forth, didn't pay their premium. Those are the land that we take back to become state land. Otherwise, if they had gotten them with the proper processes or procedures, it's very hard for us to touch. And then we have to deal, we have to let Dr. Sri Anwar use his charm and fine negotiation skills to get them to surrender to us. So if you're worried about your property being taken suddenly overnight, it's something that is not going to happen. So I'll stop here. Thank you.